All right, what's up everyone? So this video, I'm just gonna have some brief tips or really brief implementations of D-Menu. Now I've done videos on D-Menu before, but there are so many, it's one of these programs that you can just get so much with uh, for so little that I find it very useful and I use it all over the place. I mean, if you've watched my videos before, so I, I use D-Menu for a lot of things. Most people will use it for a run prompt. There it is up here. I use it also for, you know, selecting what kind of monitor I'm gonna use or uh, mounting or unmounting drives. I use it for a lot of things. You can check out my videos on D-Menu if you wanna find more, more about those. Um, but I wanna show you two implementations I've, I've started to use relatively recently using D-Menu. One is to type emojis. That's why I have all these emojis pulled up here. And another one is something I use on LARBs to, um, uh, to allow people to watch my videos remotely. Now, um, both of these implementations are really just one line. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you can very easily make a, a really useful user interface uh, with just one line of a shell script with dmenu inside. So I'm gonna show you what, uh, what I use this for. Now, originally, I mean emojis, we'll talk about the emojis first. So emojis are all over the place nowadays. It's nice to be able to uh, type that. I mean, a lot of people, if you want to type an emoji, if you're not using like Twitter or Facebook or something where you can click on something, um, people end up searching them on Google or something. And of course, I'm not going to do that. Um, originally, what I did is I actually just went to this Wikipedia page and downloaded the source of it, the HTML source of it, and just ran operations on it to isolate. Well, I'll show you what I, what I ended up with to get this file here. Um, this file that I've named Unicode, which is really just all the emojis on the left side and their name on the right. And originally what I did before I used D-Menu, if I wanted to get an emoji, let's say I wanted um, a hat, an emoji for a hat, I would just grep out um, the sequence hat from this, uh, I'm missing every single key that I press right now, I would just grep out the sequence hat from this file. So, okay, maybe I'll take this one. I would just copy that, use it for whatever I wanted. But D-Menu makes this even easier. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. I have this actually bound to uh, mod grav. And what it does is it gives me a D-Menu menu where I can type in, let's say I want a hat. Uh, you know, I'll take the top hat. And then you'll see that it also gives it a little notification here that says the hat has been copied to the clipboard. Now to show you that that works, I have this GIMP window pulled up over here and I can easily paste in the hat. Uh, I can say, let's say I want the um, you know, tears of joy emoji. Okay, now I got that. You see that it says copied to clipboard and I can paste that out easily. In fact, we can make a, we can make a little person, can't we? Um, give him a shirt, give him some pants. There are no pants, maybe jeans. That'll work, yeah. So uh, I can very easily get emojis and paste them in here. Now, as I said, this is really just one line um, of shell script interfaced with D-Menu, and I'll show you what that looks like. Pull up yet another, uh, let's pull it up. I think I named it D-Menu Unicode, okay? And this is all it is. Now it uses this Unicode file as an input, and really I just pipe it into D-Menu. I'll talk about why I do this thing here in a second. I pipe that into D-Menu, and D-Menu, of course, will treat each line as a different option. Uh, I is for case insensitivity, uh, case insensitivity. The L option says, give me a horizontal menu with uh, of you know 20 high or however. I could increase this if I wanted to have more. Um, and I also make it a slightly bigger font. I make it monospace 18, and that will allow you to select whatever emoji you want. Then I just push it through awk so you only get the emoji, push it through, get rid of the new lines because otherwise it'll you'll have a new line in the thing that you copy. But uh, basically it'll just copy that emoji to the clipboard. And again, this is really just in one line. And just to make it a little more clear what's going on, I added this extra line that'll just send, if you have Dunst running, it'll send a notify send command that'll say, oh, you've copied, let's... Let's uh, add some shoes to that guy. All right, so you've copied shoes to the clipboard. This line just gives you this uh, notification. Actually, I'll go ahead and complete our person over here. Uh, I think I missed the, uh, oh, maybe you just can't see him at this uh, level, whatever. Um, anyway, so doesn't really matter. Uh, so this is really just uh, something I've actually ended up using a whole lot. Uh, again, one line, that's all you need. And uh, oh yeah, I said why I do this thing here. One thing about D-Menu is if you have characters, if you give it characters that you don't have a font for, it's gonna give a little error or D-Menu is gonna crash. It's not even gonna give an error. I shouldn't say that. 
Um, so what I've done here is all the, you'll see here in my input file, there are some characters here at the bottom that I don't actually have. So I've just marked all of these with a, you know, a pound sign. And my input command just says, ignore all the lines, you know, only grep out the lines that don't have the pound sign. That's all that's for. And that's so I don't have a, a demenu error. So depending on what font you have, depending on how complete your Unicode characters are, you might have to throw this on more. But um, I, I just have, I think, Noto emojis, Google Noto emojis have installed, and that'll work for that. So you can check this out. This will be on my GitHub. Now, the other one thing, um, now the other little dmenu tip is another script that I use. Actually, it's in the same folder. I shouldn't close that out. It's called tutorial videos. Actually, I'll just show you how that works first. Now, if you use my dot files, if you've installed LARBs or anything like that, one functionality is if you type uh, mod shift E, you get this little menu that says, what do you want to learn about? It gives you a couple options um, down here. Uh, let's say I want to learn about MUT, so I'll click on that or type that in. And this is this D menu prompt, it'll take a second, but what this D menu prompt does is it actually pulls up a video, it really streams a video from my channel. Uh, that's, that's the goal of it. And this is so, like if someone wants to learn about something, they can just open this up. Obviously, I don't use this myself because, you know, you know, I did the video, so I know this stuff. But uh, for those of you who use LARBs, you might know that this is in there. So this is really just as easy to do. Uh, it is another one-liner, and I will pull this up. It's tutorial vids, and again, this is mapped in i3 to a particular um, uh, binding. But um, here, really what I do, first off, I have a variable where I have uh, whatever the topic is and then a link to it separated by a tab. And really what this one-liner is, again, it's it's super simple. All it is is you uh, take the video list, you grep out, there are some of these without URLs, and you you know only grep the ones with URLs. That's just so I can add the URLs, URLs later when, when I do the videos. And you, uh, I specifically wanted to only show uh, the first part, not the URL, so I tell said to ignore the part afterwards. And then it'll give you that D menu prompt. So what this variable is going to end up being is whatever the name of the thing you want to see is. And, uh, or yeah, it goes a little further than that, but whatever. Um, then it's just going to grep. It's actually going to read this variable twice, which is you have to do if you don't want it to show the URLs. But, but anyway, once you choose what you want to see, uh, it's going to plug that into a grep command that's going to search through this again and basically get the URL. It's going to get the stuff after the tab and it's going to just play that in MPV. So at the end of the day, MPV is just going to run on one of these URLs. So this is another simple implementation of something in dmenu that I, I find very useful. Uh, again, just a, a little tip, but hopefully my objective here isn't just to, sh to show you these things. I mean, I think the Unicode thing, at least everyone else can probably use. Again, it, both of these are on my GitHub. Um, but dmenu, I think, uh, is as a fuzzy finder, is something that's very useful. And uh, a lot of people always have clever implementations for it. So again, check it out if you haven't already. There are plenty of things that you could probably invent to use this for. But anyway, that, that's going to be about it for this video, uh, and I'll see you guys next time.